What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Fusion 360 for woodworking tutorial. So I thought I'd create a video showing you some different ways that you can create different kinds of woodworking joints inside of Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I would say if there are any joints that I don't cover that you'd like to see in a video, leave a comment below and let me know what else you'd like to see. But to start off, I figured I'd create a mitered butt joint. And so there's a couple different ways that we can do this because this is going to be a joint that basically goes 90 degrees around a corner. So you could either model your board standing up and then you could remove the material or you could model the profile um, and then extrude it up into a board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to model my board up and then remove the material just so you can see what we're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating a sketch and we're just going to click on this plane right here and I'm going to assume that all of these are done with one by fours just for simplicity. Um, I know maybe some of these joints don't necessarily make sense with that but that'll allow me to kind of move through this a little quicker. So what we're going to do is we're going to start and we're just going to model this with the dimensions of a one by four. So we're going to do three and a half inches tall and click and we'll draw another line and this is going to be 0.75 or three quarters of an inch. Then I'm going to tap the R key to activate the rectangle tool, I'm just going to single click here, single click here. You could also draw a line in order to close this face in. But now I'm going to click finish sketch. And what I can do is I can extrude this whatever length I want my board to be. So in this situation, we're going to say this board is going to be 24 inches long. And so what we need in this situation is we need to cut this edge off at a 45 degree angle. So the way that I want to do that is I want to create another sketch by clicking on create sketch, I'm gonna click on this top face. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna model out our angle right here. And so the way that we can do that is we can just activate the line tool and click on our corner. And either one of these corners will work um, depending on what direction you want this to go. I'm gonna click on this corner. And then you can see how when I click on the line tool, I can set a number of degrees. Well, in this situation, what I wanna do is I wanna type in a value for degrees. But notice that right now, the value for length is selected. Well, you can adjust that by doing a shift tab or a tab and you can jump between these different values. And so in this situation, I want this to have a 135 degree angle. So you can see I can type in 135, and now that's gonna lock my mouse to 135 degrees. And then I can just mouse over this edge to find this point, and then just draw lines across this in order to create a face. So now that we have a face in here, we can go back and use the extrude tool to click on this face, and remove this material. So you can see how in this situation what this did is this automatically shifted to a cut operation to remove material. That's because it saw that we were extruding something through an object. And so this is good. This is where we want this to be. We're going to click on OK. And one thing I should have done that I didn't do when I initially extruded this out was make this a component. We'll do that for our other pieces of wood. We're not going to worry about it for this one. But now, what I want to do in this situation, and people would handle this differently depending on um, the conditions that are created and all of that. For me, now that I have this 45 degree angle created, it's really easy for me to come in here and create a sketch and click on this bottom face. And now I can just draw a line along this edge. And then I can draw a line from this point, the length of my other board. So we're going to call that 24 inches as well. And then I can just draw a line from here and I can inference across until I get to the same point or I get to the point that's level with this one right here and I can click, click again and click finish sketch. Well now I have a filled in face that I can extrude up to create my other board. And so one thing that's gonna be important when we do this, we're gonna activate the extrude tool. We're gonna to extrude this up three and a half inches, but we wanna make sure we don't select the join operation because if we select the join operation, it's gonna take this board and make it a part of this body. What we wanna do instead is in our operation, we wanna select the option for new component. And so new component is gonna create this new board as a new component completely separate from the other one. Then we can click on OK. You can see how now that shows up here. My other one is in bodies. I could probably right click on this and click create components from bodies. That way I can make this first one into a component as well. You can see how these two are now in here as individual entities that you can turn on and off. So now 
we want to create a half lap joint. So the way that we're going to create a half lap joint is I'm going to start by creating a sketch and we'll just draw it on this axis again. And while this time I drew out my board standing up, for this other, I'm gonna draw this with my board laying down. So I'm gonna start my point right here, and then this is going to be 0.75 inches thick. So then we can click, and then I'm gonna draw three and a half inches for the width, and then I'll use the rectangle tool to finish that in. And so I'm gonna click on Finish Sketch. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna extrude this out 24 inches, and we're gonna make this a new component. And so what we've done is we've modeled out our first board here. We're gonna click on OK. But what we need is we need this to have material removed where our other board would lap over top of it. So the way that I would do this is I would just create another sketch on this face, and I would draw this to be the width of my board, so 3.5. Then I would use the rectangle tool in order to close that in. And then now, we want to extrude this down half the width of our board. So in this situation, we can just do the math in the cell. So for example, if we type in, basically we know this is 0.75 inches thick, so we're going to type in negative 0.75, but then we're going to type in divided by two and hit the enter key. What that's going to do is that's going to remove half of this material right here. And then I'm going to do something very similar to what I did with my um, with my 45 degree joint over here. I'm going to create a sketch on this face and I'm just going to rough out the size of my board. So I'm just going to draw a line from here to here. I'll draw this line to be 24 inches long. Then I can also draw lines along here, here, here and here in order to close this in. Then we'll click Finish Sketch. And so now what I can do is I can extrude this into its own piece of wood. So in this situation, the width would be negative 3.5. And again, make sure that you set this to New Component. So then that'll create both of these as their own component inside of your model. So that one's pretty easy to create. So the next one is probably the trickiest. And so the next one is gonna be the mortise and tenon joint. So the way that we're going to create that is we're going to start with a sketch. And we're going to model our board laying down. So we can just do this front view. And we're going to model out our board to be 3 quarters of an inch thick. three and a half inches wide. Then we'll use the rectangle to close this in. And we're gonna extrude that to our length. So again, we'll leave it at 24. Make sure you create a component and click on OK. And so what we wanna do in this situation, and this is probably a little bit better for a thicker piece of wood, but we'll go ahead and create it for this for right now. Um, what we wanna do in this situation is we need to basically rough out the hole that we're gonna have in here. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna start by creating my hole. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna create a sketch and click on this face. And it might help if you turn off these other components that are back behind these. So I'm just gonna click on this one. I'm gonna do a shift click and I'm gonna select all of these except my last component. And I'm gonna type the V key on my keyboard. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna turn those off so that I can work just on this face without the distraction. And so what's helpful for me is to start off by drawing basically the outline of the board that's gonna butt up to this face, just so I can see it. It's kind of a visual thing for me. You don't have to do that, but you definitely can. And so what I wanna do is we're gonna, we're gonna start our hole from the very center of this object. So notice with the line tool active, if you mouse over this edge, and find the central point, and then you mouse over this edge, you can move your mouse up to find the center, where the center point of this edge and this edge would intersect. And so what I'm gonna do in this situation is, I'm assuming that we're gonna want an inch of material on either side of our joint. And so that's gonna remove two inches, and our board is three and a half inches wide, so that means this uh, piece needs to be an inch and a half. So in this situation, that means that I'm gonna start from the middle, and I'm basically gonna do an inch and a half divided by two. So that's gonna give me 
half of the width of the box that I'm going to create. And then I'm going to go halfway to this edge. You can see how this edge is 0.375. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in 0.375 divided by 2 and hit the Enter key. And then now I can draw this line to be an inch and a half here. I can go ahead and draw this the same way, so 0.375 divided by 2. Then I can use the rectangle tool in order to close this in. And I'm going to go ahead, and so what we've done, if we click on Finish Sketch, is we've basically roughed out the size of this hole. We've also created a face out here. And so we really want to do two things with this. The first thing we want to do is we want to extrude this in the depth of our hole. So that's very easy to do because we have this face created. We just want to activate extrude click on this face and then give it a depth. So in this case, I'm assuming this is going to go half of our three and a half inch wide piece of wood. So negative 3.5 divided by two and hit the enter key. And so what that's done is that's created our receiver piece of wood. Well, now we need to create the piece of wood with the, um, with the joint coming off of it. So the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to use that same sketch that we had before. And notice that this got turned off when I extruded this. So I need to go back into my sketches and turn this sketch back on. But what we need to do is we need to create a piece of wood in this hole. Because right now this is a hole that's been cut out. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to do the same distance. So negative 3.5 divided by 2. And for our operation, we want to create a new component. So what that's going to do is that's going to create a new component inside of this piece of wood. And we're going to click on OK. So what that's done is that's created this piece right here. And it helps to turn off your other component once you do this so that you can kind of see what you're working with. And what I want to do is now we actually do want to use join mode with the extrude tool. So we're going to use the extrude tool and we're going to select these two faces. And we're going to extrude this out a little bit. And notice that this goes to join operation automatically. Assuming this is going to be 24 inches long, we want to extrude this 24 inches minus, we want this to go 24 inches minus 3.5 inches divided by 2. And we're going to click on OK. So now, if we look at this, we've got our mortise and tenon joint with our two components contained inside of our model. So now I want to talk about how to create a tongue and groove joint. So the way that I'm going to create a tongue and groove joint is going to be somewhat similar to what we've done before. So I'm going to start by creating a sketch on this axis. I'm going to draw out my piece of wood. So three quarters of an inch thick, three and a half inches wide. And then I'll use the rectangle tool in order to create this rectangle. And so I'm going to start by extruding this into its own component. So we're going to extrude this to 24 inches long. We're going to click New Component and click on OK. So now what we need to do is we need to model out our recess, our groove. So the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to create a sketch on this face. And we're going to find the central point right here. And I'm just going to create my groove. And we're going to say that this is going to be a half inch. I'm not really sure if that's quite what we want in this situation, but we'll go ahead and call it good for right now. So what we have right now is we have a 3 quarter inch thick piece of wood, so 0.75 inches. And I'm assuming that I want this groove to take up a third of this edge. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to draw a line right here. And because overall this would be 3 quarters of an inch, I'm going to do 0.75. I'm going to divide that by 3. And then I'm going to divide that by 2. So what that gets me is that gets me this overall width divided by 3 segments. And then we want half of this because we're moving this up. And you can see how that turns out to be 0.125 inches. So then I can just come over here and draw a line that's 0.125 inches. And we're going to go ahead and click on this. And we're just going to close in our shape. So we can use the rectangle tool in order to do that. So what that gives us is that gives us two faces right here. Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to extrude this across 
in cut mode. And notice that it goes into cut mode automatically because we're extruding this through an object. That is what we want. You can always tell when it's in cut mode because it turns red. But we're gonna click on okay for that one. And what that's done is that's created our groove. Well now, I wanna use that same sketch in order to create our tongue. So we want to extrude again, but we need to turn that sketch back on. So that should be the last sketch in your list. We're just gonna click on sketch 10 right here to turn that on. Well, now we can see that and we can extrude this into a new component. So we're gonna click on extrude, make sure to select both of these by single clicking. And then we're gonna extrude this to a length of 24. So we're gonna type in or negative 24. You can see how this automatically goes into join mode. Remember to set this to new component and click on OK. So then we can turn this component off and we're just left with this object right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch on this face. And turn these off. We'll leave this one on. I'm just going to use the rectangle tool in order to create a sketch across here. And the reason we needed to create a sketch instead of extruding these faces is so that way I can turn this component off and I can just extrude this. We want to make sure it's in join mode and we want to extrude that to three and a half inches minus the width of our tongue. So in this case, I think we said that was a half inch. So three and a half minus 0.5 and hit the enter key. Now, we turn this back on, you can see how we have our tongue and groove joint modeled inside of our model. And so for this last object, I wanna create a rabbit joint. So the way that I'm gonna do that, create a sketch, and we can go ahead and just click on this face and align it with this face, that should be just fine. And we're gonna use the line tool by tapping the L key in order to draw our profile. So again, three quarters of an inch, three and a half inches, rectangle tool to close this in, finish sketch. Then we're gonna extrude this, negative 24 inches. And so for this one, it's gonna act a lot like the uh, half lap that we created earlier. It's just that our other wood piece is gonna stand up instead of laying down. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna start by removing our material. So to do that, we'll create a sketch on this face. I'm gonna turn these off. I'm going to turn and we're going to sketch out where our piece of wood is going to go. So we're just going to use the line tool. And in this situation, we'll start right here. Draw this to the width of our piece of wood that's going to be sitting on here. So it's going to be three quarters of an inch. We'll just use the rectangle tool in order to draw a rectangle. We'll click finish sketch. Then we can extrude this across to remove our material and click on OK. And notice that I forgot to make this a component again, so we're just gonna right click on this and create components from bodies. And now what I wanna do, this one's actually really simple for our second piece of wood because this is already in here as a face and it's the size of the piece of wood that we want. So we're just gonna click on this face and click on extrude. We're gonna extrude this down and make sure that you put this in new component mode. So new component mode, we'll give it a distance, 24 inches and hit the enter key. And so what that's done is that's created our piece of wood that's going to be standing up here. So creating this joint, this is probably the easiest joint of the ones that we've created. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought was this helpful to you. Um, are there other joints you'd like to see? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.